Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to Holy Thursday, also known as Monday Thursday. And we welcome you here in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We welcome you in Jesus' name. Let us open our service today with the following. As you can see on your screen, there is an area where you can share with us. Uh, the uh, bold area is where you would read. And if you will join us, uh, we would thank you. My sisters and brothers, Christ shows us his love by becoming a humble servant. Let us draw near to God and confess our sin in the truth of God's spirit. And if you'll join me, most merciful God, we, your church, confess that often our spirit has not been that of Christ, where we have failed to love one another as he loves us where we have pledged loyalty to him, to him with our lips, and then betrayed, deserted, or denied him. Forgive us, we pray, and by your spirit, make us faithful in every time of trial. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, let every heart say amen. amen. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. But Christ suffered and died for us, was raised from the dead and ascended on high for us. Believe in the good news. In the name of Christ Jesus, you are forgiven. And if you will repeat with me, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Amen. And at this time, I'm going to ask uh, Minister Knox if he will come. Oh, I'm sorry, Minister Esther, if she will come and lead us in our Old Testament reading. Good evening, Rivertown. Our Old Testament scripture for this Monday, Thursday is Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 through 7, and verses 11 through 14. We start with the roots of the first Passover from the New Revised Standard Edition. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. The animals you choose must be year-old males without defect and you may take them from the sheep of the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. Verse 11. This is how you shall eat it your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. And no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now if Minister Knox will come and lead us in a word of prayer. Amen. Let's go before the throne of God. Father God, we pray right now as we celebrate this holy week. Father God, that we pray that uh, all that in the midst of our observing it, that 
each and every one of us will realize how important this week has been and what sacrifice you made so that we will have a chance at everlasting life. We pray this week, Father God, as we celebrate not only this service tonight, uh, Monday, Thursday service all over this country, as well as tomorrow, Good Friday. We just pray that um, uh, people realize what Easter is all about. So we pray that there's a chord struck in their lives through services that are uh, commencing all over this country, as well as Easter Sunday services that it's great to dress up. It's great to have all the great activities that we do with the Easter egg hunch for the kids. But I hope that somewhere along the way, through what is spoken and what is shown and what is done, that people will remember the resurrection of our Lord and Savior and how important it is in our lives. So Father God, we allow this service to take place tonight. and We ask you to allow your spirit to move through the people that uh, are here tonight and those that will be here later, that they will feel your presence. Know that you are the only living God to serve. And hopefully somebody out of this week will recognize that, Father, and turn their life over to you. Continue to bless us. Continue to uh, 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 allow us to grow in our faith. Continue, Father God, to allow us uh, uh, to interpret your words so that our souls and minds and hearts would continue to be fed. We give you the glory, Father God, and we thank you for our pastor, Pastor Thompson uh, Jr. Ask that you, Father God, fill him with your Holy Spirit right now so that the words that come out of his mouth is not his own, but that of you, Father God, as he speaks the word to us tonight. The songs that are sung, the prayers that are prayed, the scripture that is read, may it bless somebody's life tonight, Father God, to the point that they want to have a, a, a stronger relationship with you. And if they don't have one, that they will want to start a relationship with you, Father God. We give you the glory. We lift you up and we honor you, Father God. And we thank you for uh, your sacrifice to us, Father God, that allow us to have a chance at everlasting life with you. And in your son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen, and thank you, uh, Minister Knox. We will now have uh, our Minister of Music, uh, another uh, Knox, Brother Dwayne Knox, Jr.
Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Minister Knox Jr. And now Minister Esther will come with our New Testament reading. Our New Testament scripture is John chapter 13, verses 1 through 11 and 31 through 35. From the New Revised Standard Version, we begin with Jesus washing the disciples' feet. Now, before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that he was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean and you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. Moving on to verse 31, the new commandment. When he had gone out, Jesus said, now the Son of God has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thanks be to God and thank you, uh, Minister Esther. Thank you. Minister Knox Sr. and uh, by our music minister, Minister Knox Jr. Uh, we thank you for your uh, diligence and for your participation. Um, and we thank each and every one of you for joining us tonight. We're not going to keep you long. This is a Wendy Thursday service, and we are going to uh, come in and, and, and do the service and let you um, go about your business. But we do ask one thing. We ask that uh, once you uh, view the service, if you will, if you will share it uh, with uh, friends and, and family uh, and invite others to join us also. This again is Monday, Thursday, and we are here celebrating uh, the fact that our Savior not only came, but he came to set us free. You heard the passages of scripture read earlier, the passage from uh, Exodus, uh, and also the passages from John, uh, John 13. I'm not going to reread them, but what I would like for you to do, I would like to focus your attention to uh, verse 1 of John chapter 13. Again, that's verse 1 of John chapter 13, and it reads in this manner. Now, before the festival of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to his father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them until the end. 
And just briefly for a few minutes of your time this evening, uh, the topic, Jesus knew. Jesus knew. Let us pray. Most gracious and almighty God, as we come on this Thursday before Easter, the Thursday, Lord God, that your son, Jesus, sat at the table with the disciples. The time when your son, Jesus, came and knew that his hour had come. And we thank you, Lord God, for your son. We thank you, Lord Jesus for all you have done for us. Now, Lord, as I prepare to speak, I pray that it won't be me speaking, but that it will be you speaking through me. I come as your willing vessel. My eyes, my ears, my mouth, my tongue, my all I give to you. Come, Holy Spirit, have your way. Speak to my heart, Lord. But when you speak to my heart, then I'll know what to say. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Lord God, indeed, you are a rock and you are a redeemer. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Let every heart say amen. Now before the festival of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to his father. Jesus knew. Monday, Thursday. Monday, Thursday is the Thursday before Easter. Scholars say the, the word Monday, M-A-U-N-D-Y, is derived from the Latin word mandatum, which means command. On this Thursday before his crucifixion, Jesus gave his disciples a new mandate, or he gave them a new command. Jesus says, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Well, my brothers and my sisters, please understand, Jesus did not haphazardly come to Jerusalem. He and his disciples came for the festival of Passover. Jesus, you see, was familiar with the passage uh, 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 and the importance of the passage read from Exodus chapter 12. Being Jewish, both he and his disciples were aware of the first Passover and how it was the final plague uh, uh, and their means by which the Jews were finally freed from Egyptian slavery. You see, when you go back to chapter uh, uh, 11, uh, chapter 12 of Exodus, as uh, Minister Esther read, you find that on that first Passover, that this was the 10th plague. It was the plague that finally convinced Pharaoh to let God's people go. They were to take a lamb, uh, a lamb that was a year old, a lamb that was unblemished. And when you read it, as Minister Esther read, they were to take that lamb, and if the family was too small to, uh, in, to, to consume the entire lamb, they were to unite with another family so that none would be wasted. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, but when you continue to read, when we continue to read, we find that it was the blood that spared the lives of the firstborn. They were told to take the blood and to smear it on the uh, both sides of the door and the lintel of the door, and then that death angel would pass them by or would pass over them. Hence, pass over the death angel would pass over the house if it had the blood smeared on the door. And they were to do this continually. God said to Moses that the people were to do it as a perpetual ordinance. It was to be done 
on a yearly basis. And here we are many years, thousands of years later, and Jesus is coming to Jerusalem to keep the tradition going of celebrating the festival of Passover. Now you remember Minister Knox talked about it Sunday, how Jesus rode in about four days ago on that Sunday, how he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, the fold of a donkey. And how the people were shouting Hosanna in the highest and praising God for Jesus coming into town. And now here we are. Four days later. And Jesus and his disciples are in an upper room sitting around a table. They were aware of Passover. They were there to celebrate the feast of Passover. Now, although Jesus, being completely human, rode into town on the foal of a donkey, my brothers and my sisters, Jesus knew. He knew that only the blood of an unblemished lamb could deliver the people from their slavery in Egypt. He also knew that only the blood of an unblemished lamb could deliver the people from the slavery of their sin. And he knew that indeed he was that lamb. He was and is the precious lamb of God. He knew the hour had come for him to depart from this world. As John 13, 1 says, Jesus knew who was going to betray him. He knew who was going to deny him, not one time, but three times. Jesus knew who was not going to stay awake and pray with him. He knew who was going to run away when the soldiers came for him in the garden. Oh, my friends, Jesus knew that that would be his last supper, his last supper with the disciples. He knew. He knew that this was the Last Supper, and at the Last Supper, he instituted what we now refer to as Holy Communion. When he took the bread, and he blessed it, and then he broke it, and he gave it to the disciples seated around the table with them, and he said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. And then after the supper was over, he took the cup, and he blessed it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and drink from this all of you. This is my covenant, my blood shed for the forgiveness of sin. Jesus knew. He knew about the pain and the agony that he would suffer after his betrayal. Jesus knew. Thus, we find later on that he went to the Garden of Gethsemane and he took with him Peter, James, and John, and he said, my soul has become troubled. And he asked him, if you would just stay here as I go a little bit further. And you find this in the other Gospels that he said, as I go a little bit farther into the garden, I want you to stay awake and pray with me. And as he went away into the garden to pray, he prayed a prayer. Being human, Jesus knew the agony that he would suffer. Jesus knew the pain that he would suffer. Being purely human, being completely human, he prayed a prayer. He says, Father, if it is at all possible, please remove this cup from me. However, he said, not my will but your will be done. And after saying that prayer, he returned to Peter, James, and John and found that they were sleeping. He had asked them simply to remain awake and to pray with him. And he asked him, are you sleeping? And he went away a second time and he prayed again to God that that bit a cup be removed. But again, he said, not my will, Lord, but your will be done. He went back 
And he found the disciples sleeping. And he said again, are you still, could you not remain awake for one hour and play, pray with me? And he went back a third time. And he prayed a similar prayer, asking if it was possible for that bitter cup to be removed from him. And he came back the third time. And he found the disciples still sleeping. He didn't scold them. But he said to them, the time has come, and I'm paraphrasing, my betrayer is at hand, so let's get up and be gone. Jesus knew what awaited him. He knew the pain. He knew the agony. He knew but he yet he loved us so much until he endured and he obeyed his father's will and the cup was not removed from him. Yes, my brothers and my sisters are as we go through this, and Minister Knox did a great job, and I thank him for it. As we go through this, I hope this Holy Week, we have the rest of this day. We have Good Friday. We have Saturday. I hope we focus on Jesus and what Jesus has done for us. Oh, it's great to celebrate Easter. It's great to celebrate our form of Passover. But let us not forget the sacrifice that was made on our behalf. My brothers and my sisters, Jesus knew all that was going to happen to him, yet he ate and he drank with the disciples. Per John's gospel, he even washed their feet. He washed the feet, ate and drank with the one that he knew was going to betray him. He ate, drank, and washed the feet of the one who denied him, not one time, not two times, but three times. He ate, drank, and washed the feet of those who fell asleep and were not even able to stay awake and pray with him for just one hour. He washed the feet, ate and drank with those who ran away and left him when the soldiers appeared to take him before the council. And let us not forget that not only did he eat and drink, eat and drink, and wash the feet of those who were with him at the table, but he bore the sin of humanity. He bore your sins. He bore my sins. He bore our sins. He bore the sin of humanity, so much sin, until his father could not look upon him. He was actually separated from his father. Not by any sins that he committed, not by any wrong that he committed, but he was separated because of our sins, the sin of the whole world. But my brothers and my sisters, remember this. Out of love for humanity and obedience to his heavenly father, Jesus endured the bitter cup so that the world could be freed from the slavery of sin. So as we go into Monday, Thursday, the day during Jesus' time when he was betrayed, the day during Jesus' time when Peter said, I'll be with you, I'll, and paraphrase it, I'll go with you. I don't care what anybody else does. I'm going to be with you. And he looked at him and he said, before the rooster crows, Peter, you will deny me three times. And he said to Judas, 
as you read it. He said, go quickly and do what you have to do. He knew Judas was going to go and betray him for 30 pieces of silver. In today's currency, that would be about $200. He sold Jesus out for $200. We won't go into the reason. There are many different speculations as to why he, why he did it. But the point is, it was done. And then, in order to show who Jesus was, we are told that when he saw Jesus in the garden, he came up to him and kissed him in order to identify him to those who would take him captive. He betrayed Jesus with a kiss. The one who had washed his feet, the one who had had dinner with him, the one who had drank with him, the one he had walked with, the one he had seen commit do miracle after miracle, the one he had seen heal people, the one he had seen uh, uh, take two fish and five loaves of bread and feed over 5,000 people, the one whom Jesus had entrusted with being a treasurer betrayed Jesus verbally and with a kiss. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, the Jesus out of love, out of compassion, when Sister Esther read 31 through 35, he said before he ever got into the garden, he said, I give you a new command that you should love one another. Wasn't going to go there, but I got to. What would the world be like if we did what Jesus called for us to do? And that is to love one another. And notice when he said love one another, he didn't put any stipulations on it. He didn't say love if they are the same color as you. He didn't say love if they have the same, same understanding that you have. He didn't say love if they fit in your group. He didn't say love if they went to your church only. He didn't say love if. He said love ye one another. And definitely the world now needs to love one another. If we love one another the way Jesus calls for us to love one another, the world would be a better place. So as we go through this Holy Week, I invite you to love one another. I invite you, as Jesus has forgiven us, to forgive one another. I invite you as we go through this Holy Week to remember what Jesus Christ has done for me and what he's done for you. I invite you to get a closer relationship with Jesus as we go through this Holy Week, as we go through this night, as we go through Good Friday, as we go through the Saturday where he laid in the grave, as we go through Sunday when he rose from the grave. I invite you to establish a stronger relationship with Jesus if you already have one. I invite you to Establish a relationship with Jesus if you don't already have one. Look what he did for us. What are we willing to do for him? I want you to think about this. Jesus moved day by day into his final week, knowing full well the agony he was about to suffer. Being human, he desired the bitter cup to be removed from him. Yet, he knew the only way was to follow the will of God. We have many things in life we do not desire. Yet, God's will is that we obey and follow him. I said I wasn't going to keep you long, and I'm not. But Jesus knew. He knew the agony. He knew the pain that he would suffer. 
but because of his love for you and for me, he endured it anyway, obeying the will of his father, knowing that he was the only lamb. <laughs> Hear me now, he is the only lamb that can, whose blood will cover us and forgive us of our sins. He knew it. And he went through the agony and the pain for you and for me. As we continue in Holy Week, again, this is the day, the Thursday on which Jesus was arrested and brought before the council. We'll talk more about that on Good Friday tomorrow. But as we remember Jesus, I want you to think about this. Luke said that Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane and he prayed so hard until sweat the size of drops of blood fell from his head. He was praying that if it was any way possible, the cup be removed from him. But as we get to the close of this session, I want you to Visualize in your mind, which, which of the groups would you have been involved with? Which of the groups would, would you have found yourself in? You see, don't just read the Bible and, and, and leave it like it is. Where, where would you be? Well, would you be in the group? Uh, would you be in that group, uh, you know, of, 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 at the point it was Peter, James, and John were the only three that, that Jesus took with him up into the garden and asked him to pray with them. Would you be, is your relationship so close with Jesus that you, that you would be of the group that was willing to, pay, that would be willing to go and pray with him and pray for him as he goes through what he's going through or as he prepares to go through what he's going through? If you're in that group, then this is what I ask you to do. I ask you to stay up until midnight and pray. This evening, this night, stay if you're in that group and you don't have to you, you don't have to explain it to me. This is between you and God. But if if, if your relationship is tight with Jesus and and, and 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 you you know that you would have been in that group to pray for him, I want you to stay up until midnight and give a simple prayer. Now if you if you're in the group it be the group that ran away. If you've ever found yourself in a position where, where, where you, you've run away, either from the call of Jesus or, or if you've run away from, 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 from doing what you know God wants you to do. And I want you also to pray and ask for forgiveness. And, and if you're like me and, and you run from the call at one time or another, the call that God has upon your life, uh, you, you, it's not going to be a shame. No. For the most part, most of not all of us have run at one time or another from a call that God has had upon, had upon our lives. But if God has a call upon your life during this Holy Week, I want you to surrender and let God lead you to where God would have you to go. Which group would you be in? Or maybe you, again, like me in my younger days, are, are in the group where at one time or another you denied Jesus, either because, either because of the crowd you desire to associate with, or uh, maybe it just didn't seem like uh, the, the the thing to do at the time, and 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 for whatever reason you denied him, or maybe you even got angry with him, and at that point you found yourself in some form of denial. If that's the group you're in, please know that he will reinstate you. He will reinstate you. Just like he reinstated Peter, just like he reinstated me. So whatever group you find yourself in, I want you to think hard and long about it. But what I want you to do, my desire for each and every one listening to my voice to do is take this time and get closer 
to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Get closer to your Savior. Get closer to your Creator. Get closer to the Holy Spirit who dwells within you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Monday to Thursday. The Thursday before Easter. The Thursday that Jesus ate and drank with his disciples. And per John, he even washed their feet. The Thursday that he gave them a new commandment. That they should love one another. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, love ye one another. Be with us tomorrow night. Uh, invite family and friends to be with us. We will do the seven last words of Jesus. We love you. And God bless you and God keep you. Until we see you again, hopefully tomorrow evening. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Jesus loves you, and we love you too.